Hi, this is Raj. Welcome back to the ETL specialization course on SCD type 0. As part of this session, we will go through what is SCD type 0 and a hands-on demo. What is SCD type 0? When the dimension attributes value never changes, then such a dimension attribute belongs to a SCD type 0 category. However, the other attributes in the same dimension table shall change as per other SCD principles such as SCD type 2 or SCD type 1. In such a case, the dimension table as a whole will become a hybrid SCD type since we have SCD type 0 candidate as well as the other attributes following other SCD principles. So, what is an example of SCD type 0? All the attributes in a data time dimension will never change. So, that's a good candidate of uh, SCD type 0. And in many of the dimension tables, if you have a field named created date, that is a potential candidate of SCD type 0 as uh, created date should not be tampered. So with this understanding of what is SCD type 0, let us dive into a demo session. For this demo, I have considered a table named category which used to store the movie categories. This is the structure of the category table. So for this demo, the created date field is going to be the SCD type 0 attribute where whenever there is a change in this record the target dimension table will get updated with corresponding details for name, code, last updated fields but the created date field will never change and we don't want to change it in the target either so here is the target dimension table structure so this is uh, this uh, target dimension table as a whole is a hybrid dimension table because created date is a SCD0 candidate and name code and last updated fields will be as part of SCD1 overwriting the history now as we have seen the structure of source and target table, let us move on to the transformation involved for this demo. The first two step of this transformation is used to incrementally fetch the category changes which occurs in source table. Let us go through these steps. I have covered enough details on how this timestamp based change data capture mechanism works in my other video. Please refer to my channel to look for timestamp based CDC technique to understand it. Then once the incremental changes are fetched, we are going to do a lookup based on the natural ID, ID field from the target dimension table to see if there are already any records present in the target dimension table and if so for the particular natural key we like to return a surrogate key from the data mod. So once the category key lookup is done we are going to make a filter to check whether the retrieved category key is successful or not that is whether already a record is existing in the dimension table or not. If it doesn't then it means a new record or new candidate for this target dimension table and we do a insert operation and this is how it is going to be. If you see the interesting points to be noted is only the name, code and last updated fields are marked with update operation specified as yes. Whereas the created date 
field is specified as no. So even when there is a change in that source category table, we will only update those changes in these fields and we will never update the created date field. So if the category key lookup is passed, that is if already a record is present in the dimension table for that business key, that is the category ID, then we don't want to do a category key generation which we did through this sequence step before for inserting or updating the record. So, in case of records which are already present in dimension table, we just want to do an update of that particular already present dimension record. So, I have used a common insert or update step because the definition of the field is going to remain the same and hence both the streams are merged into the same insert or update step. So let us run the transformation and see what happens. So to begin with, there are no records in the target dimension table. So once the transformation has run, we expect two records in line with the source table. Okay, the transformation run has completed and we can see the two records now in the dimension table, which is good. Now let us do a update on the source table to see what happens when there is a change. So for the demo purpose, I am just going to change the code of the category for the category ID 1 from AC to ACT. So the record has been updated can just select the source table to see whether the update has been properly. Yes, the record has updated. Now let's run the transformation to see what happens at the dimension table. Okay, the transformation has run. Okay, let us select the dimension table now. Now you can see that the code has changed from AC to ACT and the category key remains the same and uh, last updated data has been changed as well in line with the source table and you can see there is no change in created date field which of course we have not uh, changed in the source table as well. So consider a scenario where the application tries to tamper the create a date field. So let us update now for the same category ID 1. Okay, the update is done. Let us select the source tables to see the change has been reflected or not. Okay, the update is done on create a date field. So this is a scenario where I am trying to explain the our ETL process should not tamper the created date field even if the source application tries to tamper it. So now let's run the transformation. Okay, it's completed successfully. Now let us check our dimension table. Okay, good. You can see that uh, our target dimension table is not updated with created date. So it means it's an ACD zero attribute and hence we don't want to tamper that detail. With this I'm concluding this demo on ACD type zero. We'll meet you guys in the next session. Thank you.